Alright, welcome to part 3? Part 3 of our React newsletter tutorial series. Uh, in the last video, we created our <clears throat> we created our app class and um, we created basically a shell of it, basically. So right now it just looks like this. There's nothing there. And it's also my awesome, hilarious, funny, semi-threatening text. Um, so uh, let's let's go ahead and um, move on to uh, the forum, the newsletter forum. So we need to <clears throat> first off, what we're going to do is we're going to create a, um, a newsletter form component, and we're going to import it into here, and we're going to put it, I guess, underneath of my super awesome semi-threatening text. Okay, uh, so let's. Uh, Let's go ahead and uh, import that guy, okay? So, import newsletter form from uh, base of my project newsletter form. We're going to put this under our threatening message. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot to put from. All right. <clears throat> um, so, um, in a little bit, we're going to be passing in um, component props um, from this app class. They're going to be passed into here. So, we're going to be passing in like um, a function that will handle the click event on the button and the on change event on the input box and the actual email that's being typed into the box. So we'll be passing in those props that'll be fed in from the parent, or in this case, the app contain or a component. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and move on into newsletter form. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is going to be a um, a uh, presentational component. Um, so there's there's two types of components in React. There's um, there's smart containers, smart components, whatever you want to call them. Um, stateful components, and then there's also um, dummy components, dumb components, stateless components, um, presentational components, which is what I typically a term I use. Um, so a uh, a smart container um, or a smart component is basically a component that handles state. Um, and a presentational component is a component that literally just spits out your your presentation in this case we're using JSX so it's just going to spit out some JSX in this case our newsletter form is simply going to spit out the uh, <clears throat> the HTML for the form <coughs> excuse me so let's go ahead and get started here let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and handle this this presentational component so we're going to go ahead and import react like you always do Okay, and let's go ahead and create a cre uh, presentational component here. This is one way of doing it. You can also create um, uh, you can create a uh, create a class. I mean, there's you can you can create presentational components in you know a couple ways. I like I like creating the cons. It's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> in a little bit, we're gonna be passing in some um, some props. But not right now, not yet. Use the arrow function, and instead of using render inside of these inside of these um, these presentational components, at least for the, the this the way we're handling here, we're going to use a return. Okay, and um, let's go ahead and um, give it a closing div or something. It's not complaining. And let's go ahead and export this. Okay. And actually, let's go ahead and do a test to make sure that our form is actually being read from app.js. Good. There we go. So there's a form. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, I mentioned in um, the, f the first video that we're using Ant Design. Um, so we're going to be using um, Ant Design's various components. They have form components, they have button components, 
um, icon components, so we're going to use those. So, <clears throat> first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to import. Um, we're going to import that form component. Okay, so it's coming from the ant d package. All right, and we're going to go ahead and create our single node here. So form. There's also a um, a prop on the form component called layout. So we want it to be in line. Um, there's documentation out there for it. And again, you don't have to use Ant Design. You can use whatever you want. I tend to use Semantic UI. Um, you know, that's just me. Um, we have a class name. <coughs> uh, class name of uh, newsletter form. The action right now is uh, we're just we're just going to set it to a um, JavaScript void function for right now, and a method of post. Close the form. <coughs> um. Okay, so. The next thing we need to do is we need to um, create a form item. So we're going to call it like this. Every item that you add in the form, it, at least with Ant Design, you have to wrap in a form item. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to create that input box. So let's go ahead and use Ant Design's input component. All right, and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach a, a prefix or a um, it's basically putting a um, an icon um, um in front of the um, in front of the, the text inside of the input box. I'll show you. And we also need a um, and by the way, we're also using the icons from Ant Design as well. It's just an icon component. They have their own set of icons. I use this one. They don't have a whole lot of icons from what I've seen. Um, yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and add a placeholder. All right. And let's see what that looks like. All right, no errors. And there you go. All right, got an input box. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> we're later on, or in just a bit, we're going to be attaching a value and then also an unchange event. Um, we'll do that in just a bit. Um, let's go ahead and get the button in here, please. And we're going to use the button component. Jeez. Uh, button component from Ant Design. And. Alright. And we're just going to uh, put send. Call button send. And then we're going to. Um, we're going to give it a type. So HTML type of submit. And we're also going to say, I want the button to be a type, I want it to be a primary color button. And later on, in just a bit, we're also going to have an onclick on here as well. So not going to worry about that, but there's our button right there. All right. All right, so now we have the form in here. It looks... It looks pretty <laughs> and um, it's not doing anything it's not doing anything when we type in here um, it's not sending it's not doing anything right now so we'll handle that in the future um, but for right now we will um, let's go ahead and create the props that will be passed into here so 
<clears throat> excuse me, we need, we're going to have three props. One, one is going to be the actual um, value of the input box. The other one is going to be what happens when you um, the um, the function that's handled when you change, or the the function that's called when you're typing into the input box. And then the other one will be the function that actually sends the data to the um, to the endpoint. Um, so let's go ahead and um, come back to our app class, and <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and initialize the state here, and we're going to use the components constructor. The constructor is the first method that's called when you call a class. So we're going to have a constructor passing the props, call super, passing the props into there. All right, and then we're also going to call this.state. And we're going to initialize the email for right now. All right, and this is going to be what's set to the API later on. All right. So we now have an email set on the state. And actually, if you go back to here, and if you have the little React, the React Chrome extension, extension uh, it's very useful seeing what's going on in your state. You can see email is already declared right here. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to pass this email right now um, into the uh, component newsletter form. All right. And we're going to call it prop email. And we're passing in what? This.state.email. That's how you grab the value of the state inside of a class. And we're going to pass it into this newsletter form. Okay, we need to go back to newsletter form. It's expecting that email. So we need to pass in the email. And what are we going to do? We're going to set the value. This is going to be a controlled component. So we're going to set the value to that email. All right. So now that's done. It's not doing. It's not doing anything yet. It's not changing. We can't change anything yet. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So we're going to create a um, <clears throat> a function that will set the value of this dot state dot email or this email right here. Okay. So we're going to call it handle on un change email. Can't type today. And this function is going to take in, well, the email or the query. I don't want to confuse me. All right. And we're going to call this.setState. This is how you set the component state in React. And we want to set that email to the query or I think on 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 GitHub I have it called email. We call it email. Just don't mix the two up. All right. This is our key and this is the value. All right. So, what's next? Well, if you sit there and you still you try to type into here right now, it's not doing anything. Like, it's not doing anything. Why? The reason why it's not doing anything is because you did not pass that function, that on change event, into the newsletter component. And the reason why you can't type in here is because we're passing in this.state.email, which is a blank string, and you're not able to type in here, right? So it's always set to a blank string, so you can never type into here. So let's go ahead and fix that, okay? <laughs> Handle on change email needs to be passed into here, into the newsletter form. And it's this dot handle on change email. We're gonna come in here, pass that right there in the props, and <clears throat> put this guy on new line. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna call the on change event. All right, we're gonna destructure the event. I just want the target. You could go event dot target dot value. I'm not gonna do that. Um, arrow function handle unchange email and this is going to be target dot value alright 
I should also note with these props here, you should be doing a prop types check. Um, my linter is off. I didn't activate it for this project, although you should always do that. Um, so make sure you're validating your prop types um, with uh, any props that you're passing into here. I'm not going to go into any type of detail right here. Um, this is not a production very uh, ready project or anything. It's just a little fun project. But you always want to validate your prop types always. Um, and depending on what version of React you're using, uh, you're using I think it's 15.5 and above. It's React. The prop types is no longer attached to React. The React core project is now in a separate package so I'll call prop types. If you're using anything less than 15.5, I believe, um, then you're going to be using react.proptypes. Um, so yeah, just make sure you're, you're um, using prop types. Um, so yeah, so now that's in there. So it should, it should be working now. And there you go. Now you see it's collecting here in the state. Excellent. All right. And the last thing we're going to do in this video, um, we are just going to create the shell of our handle or of our, um, of our, um, the click event that's attached to the button. This event will, um, handle sending our email off to our backend API. So we're going to call this one handle send email and we'll call it email that we're passing in. And we're not gonna we're not gonna do anything right now. I guess I'll just console log it for right now because this is um it's outside of the scope of this video. So handle send email. And we're also gonna pass this one in. So this dot handle send email. And remember it's expecting this prop here. So handle send email. And then on the button. What you want to do is you want to do an on click, attach an on click event, arrow function, and you want to pass pass in that email. All right. Let's refresh. So I start typing into here, and then what happens if I hit send? There you go. So it's working. So as you can see, I could just type in any old crap here right now. I mean, you don't want that. You want to make sure you're collecting an, an email. So let's do that right now real quick before we cut this video off. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to disable that button. Um, we want to prevent the user from submitting if they don't have a valid email. So in the first video, you, you saw me introduce the validator package. So we're going to import that validator package. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, we're going to call, um, we're going to use the disable prop, right? So what we want to do is we want to say, we're going to call a um, the is email function that's off of the validator package here. So what we're going to say is disable it if it is not an email so we're going to use negation validator there's an ease there's an email function pass in the email you're done it's that it's that simple so now you see it's disabled so if i try to type in that stuff again it doesn't work but if i type in a valid email all of a sudden it works okay uh, I believe that is it for this video. Um, the next video will, um, I guess we can start wiring up the, um, the, uh, handle send function here. Um, we're going to get into some XEOs and server calls and whatnot. So, uh, I'll see you in the next video.